Welcome back guys, back with another video. Today we are talking about the FAU Owls, a team that a lot of people like in Conference USA, and Willie Taggart has a, a ton of talent to work with. It just comes down to, can they put it together on the field? I think a lot of people thought they were going to be good last year. A 5-7 and seven record wasn't exactly a confidence booster, but, but I think that he's getting things under control, he's getting things figured out, and these 10 guys that we're going to talk about today really determine how far this team can go. At the top has to be Nikozi Perry. Had a solid year for FAU last year. The Miami transfer was a great addition when he first joined the Owls. And I think that if he's able to take another step in his development, then you're looking at an FAU team that is going to be in the conversation for the Conference USA Championship. So it... it it, it, like I said, there's the talent here to be able to compete at the top level, at the highest level, and it's just, like I said, comes down to consistency if they want to be able to compete for, for a championship. And when you look at the talent on this roster, there's no reason they shouldn't be there. Number two is Johnny Ford. The USF transfer has been, honestly, really good, really explosive for the Owls. At 831 yards rushing, he averaged 6.3 yards per rush last season with five touchdowns. He also caught 23 passes for 280 yards and two touchdowns. If this offense takes another step, which Willie Taggart is a good offensive coach, if they take another step forward, then this is a team that's going to be exciting to watch. And the, the combination of Perry and Ford in the backfield is an underrated one, not only within Conference USA, but in college football. And like I said, if both of them take a step forward, this is going to be a dangerous offense, one that's going to be tough to stop. And I think that teams are going to have frets trying to slow them down. And really, when you have two options, if you can add a passing game around them, if Perry is able to take that step and Ford is dynamic in the backfield, it's going to create a lot of headaches. Evan Anderson is a monster inside. When he is on his game, He's one of the toughest players to block up the middle. He's a big body player who, like I said, has a ton of power in his frame. He's a, a really tough to block when he uses great technique and is really explosive, gets off the football. 42 tackles last year, eight tackles for loss, which for a nose tackle is really good. A lot of times when we talk about nose tackles, you're not really seeing the production in terms of stats because... They just don't make a ton of plays. A lot of times their job is to muck things up for the guys behind them or the defensive ends, the linebackers. And Evan Anderson is a guy who can put things on the stat sheet and make an impact, even if he's not going to uh, record any tackles for loss or tackles. He's the guy that commands double teams, someone that offensive coordinators have to figure out where he's going, what he's going to do, and how they're going to block him to fit their scheme. Number four, LeJante Wester. 702 yards, only averaged 10.8 yards per catch, so kind of, I guess, really more of a possession receiver. You'd like to see maybe someone step up as the big play receiver. There's another guy that we'll talk about later that's going to be that guy, but if Wester can improve those numbers, I mean, he has 65 catches, so at least Nikozi Perry knows he has a reliable pass catcher on the roster for him, but I think that if he's able to take another step, like I said, this offense, you're going to see a lot of these guys they have the talent. They have the ability to already be reliable. And now it's just a matter of can you take that next step? Because FAU, like I said, has the talent, but that doesn't mean anything if you can't put it on the field and take a step forward in terms of production and, and explosive plays. Number five, Jalen Joyner. The defensive end kind of took a step back in his production. Three and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. He and Evan Anderson are, are kind of the same in a way. Uh, maybe not the size. You're not looking at the same kind of player because Joyner plays on the edge and Anderson is going to play up the middle. But if both of them are on their game, this defensive line for FAU is going to be incredibly tough to stop and really just not, not fun to face. You're talking about disruptive players who can make plays in the backfield. Joyner can get around the edge. He can use power. You name it. This, this is a good, talented player, a dynamic player. And like I said, if both of them are on their game, this defense is just as dangerous as the offense can be. Teja Young is on the backside at safety. 
had three interceptions last year. I think that he's an exciting playmaker for the Owls. They lose a couple players in the secondary, and I think a guy like Tasia Young is going to be a nice veteran presence that's going to show the other guys how to make plays. And I think that teams are going to try to avoid him, so maybe his production goes down. But this is a guy who knows what to do when the ball's in his area, and he knows how to make plays. He knows how to change possession. He knows how to switch momentum in his team's favor. And I think we get to see that again in 2022. We talked about a dynamic playmaker, an explosive pass catcher for the FAU offense. And Jaquan Burton is going to probably be that guy again. Averaged 17.9 yards per catch last year. Only had 27 catches. So you'd like to see maybe those targets go up. Maybe those receptions go up because of that. And like I said, it's all about chemistry with Perry. And if Perry can take that next step forward, a guy like Burton is a guy who can stretch the field. You're looking at a receiver that's going to do a lot of damage vertically, and that could open things up for Western uh, underneath. And even Johnny Ford, if you're looking at a secondary that has to cover guys deep and Johnny Ford is a check down option and he gets out in space, that it's kind of all inclusive. You, you're able to stretch things out for your, your teammates. You're able to open up space for guys who can make plays at a high level. And I think that, like I said, if Burton is getting more catches, then that means this offense is in business. Linebacker Eddie Williams, a guy who probably don't really talk about him much. 44 tackles last year, five tackles for loss. If Joyner and Anderson, like I said, are playing at their highest level, then Eddie Williams is going to have a big year. I think he gets a chance to step up and show that he can be a leader for this defense. And if, like I said, if the front line is doing his part, he knows what to do. He knows how to make plays. And now that he'll probably see more action in 2022, I think the production also is going to follow. Nickelback Amon Ross, another secondary player that could see more production, more action this year. Teja Young, we mentioned before, a dynamic playmaker. And Amon Ross is in the nickel where it's very hard to be successful. I think when you look at defensive players that play in really the nickel position or in positions that are, you know, you don't see them every single play. The nickel's hard because you're guarding the slot, and that usually means you're guarding a quick player, typically has a two-way go regardless of how you guard him because usually they're off the line, and that makes things very challenging. And I think that Ross gets uh, maybe overlooked on this team, but this is a, a player who's super talented, and even if he doesn't have the production, he's something, someone you need to pay attention to. Finally, Nick Weber, a leader on the offensive line, especially at center. That's something that Perry is going to love having. You're going to have that familiarity. The chemistry between a quarterback and a center is so vital to an offense, and FAU has that returning. A veteran presence up front who can get everybody else going, get them up to speed, and if they're able to do that if the offensive skill positions are able to take a step forward. FAU is going to compete for a conference championship and make some noise in Conference USA.